Qigong for after a traumatic experience. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. I had an interesting experience this morning and it was a bit traumatic and this vlog is about Qi and life, hence the name Qi Life and of course we often talk about Qigong and how that applies to our lives um, as well as just you know often what's going on in my life or what's going on with Long White Cloud Qigong and so I thought that this experience would make an interesting topic for a vlog because it wasn't an everyday experience um, but I didn't want to just tell a story about this experience. I wanted there to be something useful about this as well. And so I thought, well, what, you know, you know, with the topic of chi life, what, what would be useful about this experience that I had? Now, of course, straight after this experience, I did some qigong. And part of the reason why I did that was to clear the trauma uh, from this experience, to settle down so I could carry on with my day because I had other things to do today. I wanted to release that energy so I could carry on. Now, the practices I did, it was quite long, fairly sophisticated maybe in some ways. So I wanted to also make this really applicable to anyone who experiences a traumatic experience of some sort with some things that you can use straight away. So what I'm going to do in this vlog, I'm going to start by, I'm going to talk a little bit about the nature of trauma so you can understand how the Qigong practices help with that. And then I'm going to give you four really simple Qigong practices that you can do straight away. You don't need to understand a lot to be able to make use of these to help you to release energy and so it doesn't become stuck um, after you have, if, if you do have a traumatic experience. Then if you watch all the way through that and you get to the end of this vlog, well then I'll have some story time uh, and I'll tell you about what this experience was that I had and I'll tell you more about what I did in my Qigong practice and why, um, what, you, you know, so the, and what I did after that as well, what I did after the Qigong practice because there might be some, some useful insights for that as well. So we'll start with the really practical easy stuff that you can apply straight away um, and even I'll put some time codes below of when those different parts start if you want to just get straight to that and then the story time and stuff like that will be later. So to begin with, the nature of trauma, there's all sorts of traumas that we can experience that affect us in, in different ways. Um, and th this can be, it can be physical trauma where something happens, something, you know, violent of some sort. Now violent doesn't necessarily mean someone attacking us. Uh, it could be more along the lines of, you know, an accident, you know, tripping over can be a, a trauma of sorts, but it, it's a shock to our body and our, our body responds to that. That is a type of trauma. But then there's lots of other sorts of things. Uh, it can be a violent interaction with someone else that can be traumatic. It can also be an argument, you know, that can create a sort of trauma in us. It can be um, seeing something scary, so even nothing to do with us, but th that affects us. Um, it can even be, you know, hearing some shocking news. All these things can create traumas of different sorts within us. Um, and, and what happens when we experience these traumas is, of course, our body responds. It tries to respond in a way that's useful for dealing with that trauma. So we shouldn't <laughs> get upset at our body for responding. It's trying to do its best to respond to these different situations. And there's different ways that we might respond. Sometimes what we do is we tense up. We pull our energy in to protect ourselves. We like bring it in as a way to, to protect ourselves and, and that, that's a useful response in lots of situations that can keep you alive. Um, something else that can happen is sometimes we activate our energy so it becomes really active um, as a response to the trauma as well and that can be a useful response in other situations. You know broadly speaking you can think of these as fight or flight or freeze. So you know sometimes freeze we pull everything in to protect and this is essentially, it's a, it's a fear response of sorts. Um, and then if our energy gets really active, maybe angry and, you know, well, this is the fight or flight part. And again, it's a response to try to deal with whatever this situation is. Something else that can happen 
is you, you know even if we haven't necessarily pulled our energy in or it's got too active or maybe we've moved through those phases is after trauma it can leave us with our energy unsteady right so it's it's been jolted it's been activated now and now ooh, it's hard for us to settle our energy afterwards um, and th there's other things that can happen with our energy as well um, when we experience trauma but I think these three main categories are going to be enough to help to understand how these qigong practices simple qigong practices are going to help to release trauma and help you to move past the experience of trauma when you do have it um, because when we activate our energy in these ways um, again th these are useful responses in in the right proportion at the right time uh, so if we have that fear response this activates our kidneys it activates our adrenal glands right when we have that maybe more angry assertive activation of our energy that affects our liver and we probably release cortisol and you know it gets very active when we get left feeling unsteady well this then it very much it affects our our earth element and it's likely going to affect our insulin and our blood sugar you know in interesting physiological responses and again all useful in the right context the issue is when we hang on to those so when we don't process them fully and let the energy of that stimulation from our response to an experience if we don't let that be processed and move through fully well then that can stay within us within our body within our system we can stay tight tensed blocking our energy flow off or we can stay with our energy too active within our body and this can cause damage within our body we can stay feeling unsteady as well and um, th well this is unpleasant in the short term and it can also mean long term that w these these just get entrenched within our body and when you know if we don't let them go then our energy doesn't flow as freely this has an impact on our health and our well-being um, and, and it also stops us from being able to fully then well move on to the next thing and, and process our other experiences in life more fully without being mm, tainted contaminated restricted um, distorted by the trauma that we may have experienced so th I think that's enough of a discussion of the nature of trauma I'm now going to get into those four uh, really simple things that you can do straight away four simple qigong practices to help you um, to, to release trauma energy and stop it from getting stuck help it to let go so that it does whatever that trauma was doesn't take up too much of a big space in your life you can let it go let it be processed and move on with other things in your life so we'll start with the first one so the first practice is simply shaking um, shaking is an instinctive response you, if you think if you have a, a big trauma you, trauma you might find that you <laughs> end up a bit shaky anyway um, and so what we can do is because that's part of our body's way of letting go of overactivated nervous energy and to help to get that energy that otherwise would get stuck in our body help to get it loose and free and flowing again now there's different types of shaking that we can do you know a good example of this if you think of a dog after it's you know been through something it'll, it'll shake really vigorously to to release the energy we can do the same thing so rather than just like staying getting stuck shaking really embrace the shaking to let go of that energy let go of the tension we might be holding it onto and let it flow through now if your trauma is the result of a, a physical trauma you're going to need to do this gently but you can do this gently as a way to start to release some of that tension um, if it's more of an emotional or psychological trauma or something like that um, you're going to be able to do it more vigorously maybe straight away so let's give that a go very simply shaking so there's different types of shaking we can do but basically if we just stand and we start to shake we get our arms going our legs going our whole body and we can really really get into it and really shake really vigorously moving our waist because this helps to loosen our spine in particular moving our legs moving our arms if we want to really shake 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 <sighs> and you can do that for as long as you feel like you need to to let go of that tension because you might notice as you shake it's like oh there's some bits that are a bit tight but stuck from pulling that energy in to let go of that tension and to start to let that energy flow out into the rest of your body again the next qigong practice is it's a breathing technique 
So that shaking, it helps release the tension in the nervous system and out into our extremities, down to our arms, our legs, tension from the spine and so on. This next technique is going to help us to release tension, block energy from our organs. And we're going to, you know, because this is one of the places where that trauma can get stuck as well. The responses within our body, where they become too activated, releasing adrenaline, releasing cortisol and so on. So the technique is called the lion's breath. And I'll talk you through it and then I'll show you. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to bend forwards, putting our arms on our knees like this, with the hands turned out. We're going to take our weight on our arms. We're going to look forwards. We're going to then stick our tongue out as we breathe out strongly. And as we breathe out, we're gonna make a growling sound. Now that out breath is going to squeeze in on our abdomen and the growling sound is going to vibrate to help to clear any stagnant energy from our organs. It's gonna help us to release any blocked energy that we might have from the trauma. So I'll show you that. So you take a deep breath in and then you might want to repeat several times i'll do it two more times so deep breath in one more deep breath in and you can often feel as you do that breathing technique um, you can feel one there's the squeeze and so it squeezes into you know squeeze massage the organs and then afterwards the fresh blood rushes back in but it also starts to flow out to your extremities more so often you'll start to feel a bit more warmth both in your organs and flowing out to the rest of your body after doing that lion's breath okay so the third one is um, it's it's to, to wash things off so these practices often they have more than one name we're going to kind of do two together so one that i normally refer to as gentle rain and then we're also going to do some brushing but you can think of this so with the first two one we shook we shook ourselves to get any of the energy that was stuck get it moving get it circulating moving outwards so it's not stuck we then use the lion breath to specifically squeeze and release um, any energy that was stuck in our organs. Now we're gonna wash it away and help to soothe and calm it. So first, gentle rain. For this, simply, we breathe in, raising our hands, and then we breathe out, lowering our hands slowly, and we feel a wash of energy descending over our whole body, down to our feet, back down to the earth. And we repeat this several times. So we breathe in, we breathe out, washing down, feeling that energy washed down, all the way down, and it refreshes and it clears away any blocked stagnant energy. Again, breathe in, breathe out, washing down, releasing any blocked energy, clearing it from our surface. Then we might want to go a little bit further and use some brushing, and quite simply, we breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, all over our body. We just breathe out as we do the brushing sweeping away any energy that might be a little bit still stuck making sure that we get all of that to go to clear to release so breathe out 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 brushing that energy away then once we finish that we can go back to some gentle rain to just really soothe the energy again so we'll breathe in lifting our hands up breathe out washing down, refreshing, renewing, relaxing, cleansing. Again, breathe in, lifting up, breathe out, washing down. We'll do one more. Breathe in, and breathe out, washing down. Okay, so the last one, really, really simple. We're just going to stand with our hands on our dantian to let the energy settle and become stable. So we've done some things to release the energy, to get it free if it's become stuck, 
to clear it from our organs, to wash it away. Now we just want to make sure that we let it settle and stabilize. So this is a super simple Qigong practice. If, if you're already practicing Qigong, it's probably something you find yourself doing at the end of almost any Qigong practice you do. If you don't practice Qigong, this is a really valuable thing to be aware of. So we're simply going to stand. We're going to have our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to relax down into our posture a little bit and then bring our hands onto our dantian. So this is a couple of inches below our belly button. We're just going to rest our palms there. We're going to sit, relax, and just breathe. Steady, relaxed breaths. And let your energy become settled, steady, stable in the center of your body. And you can do that for as long as you feel you need to until you feel nice, settled, and stable. Okay, so that's the four really simple Qigong practices you can do to help release energy after um, a traumatic experience, to help to move it through so you can release it and get your energy flowing freely again and carry on with whatever else you need to do in your day. Um, and yeah, so now we'll go to story time. I'll tell you about my experience. And then after that, I'll talk about what I did in my Qigong practice after that. And did incorporate some, at least some of the principles in these practices, but I'll talk a bit more about that. There might be something useful uh, in that as well. So what happened? Well, two nights ago, uh, the, the, the place where I live, some of you, if you've been watching the vlog for a while, you will have had a bit of a a little bit of a look around the place, although it's, it's a little bit unusual this place I'm living at the moment. Um, it's kind of a retreat center, but then there's also a lot of people who just live here. Um, like quite a few of us, there's about 90 of us who just live here on a regular basis. Uh, and it's really nice, we've got the bush around us. I'm actually just outside the retreat center now um, <laughs> at some abandoned tennis courts. There's all this graffiti and stuff like that, and that's actually going to fit in pretty well with the vibe of this experience that I had. So yeah, it's an, it's an unusual place. Lots of people live here. Um, and so two nights ago, there were um, a, a series of things happened. So one person, one of, one of my neighbors who lives very close to the part of the property that I'm on, had his car stolen. As well as that, someone else, some, somewhere else on the property, they had their car broken into and things stolen from their car. And then several people during the night just had encounters with uh, someone on the property that they didn't feel comfortable with. Um, that, yes, it seemed like, you know, maybe they were up to no good. All right, so that was two nights ago. Then this morning, um, I had just been out, um, I'd actually been out for a run. Uh, and I came back and I, and I saw um, a couple of the other residents here, uh, one of whom was the one who had just had his car stolen. And uh, I stopped to chat to them and then saw someone come up, um, sort of starting walking towards us. And uh, then when he saw us, he turned around and headed off in the other direction, which looked quite suspicious. And thinking about it more, well, he also sort of looks possibly quite similar to the person who um, I had actually seen near my neighbor's car earlier that day or earlier the day before and I you know at that stage I didn't know it was going to be stolen but it's like hmm this this just does not seem good so um, I went after him and approached him and asked him what he was doing on the property now again because there's so many residents and other people who come and go for other reasons from this property it's not always easy to know who should be on the property and who shouldn't at any given time so a good way to find out is to ask someone ask them a question and see if they have a good answer as to why they're there he didn't have any good answer as to why he was there um, so it was clear he was up to no good so I told him he needed to leave which he didn't want to do um, but the three of us escorted him off the property um, I got one of the the other guys to take, I didn't have my phone with me because I'd just been out for a run. I got one of the other guys to um, get his phone and take some photos. So we had photos of this person because it was seeming very like that maybe this was the thief. Um, and then after he left the property, we, well, two of us continued to follow him because um, the guy with the phone, he called the police. And we thought, well, we'll keep him in sight so that the police can 
um, you know, we can identify them and say, hey, that's the guy, and they can find him easily. Well, the police took a long time to come. It must have been an, easily over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. In fact, it seemed like maybe they weren't going to come at all, but they did eventually come. Um, and I think that was after, after having to call them again, um, because what happened at, at a certain point, he, um, he went up to a bus station and uh, I, I, I asked that he not be allowed onto the bus, uh, which, yeah, so they didn't let him get on a bus, so that was good. Um, but then, uh, you know, he, the, the police said, well, look, someone will come, but just stay nearby. Um, and you know, if he, if he, if he tries to leave, call again, we'll come straight away, but you know, just stay there by and keep an eye on him. Well, he, he started getting very threatening and coming right up, getting right up in my face, way too close, um, for safety, uh, and, and threatening, very overtly threatening. And he, he's a decent sized guy, um, you know, fairly solid build and, um, yeah, so eventually the police did arrive at that point he had started to head off somewhere else and he actually got out of sight and so it took them a while to to find him um they ended up sending three cars <laughs> but eventually they found him a bit further away at a shopping mall and so that was good eventually they got him but um yeah maybe a little lesson in there it's like well they could have solved the whole thing a lot faster if they just sent one car sooner <laughs> you know instead of having to send three cars later on but eventually they caught him um to begin with they they were saying that they didn't have enough to arrest him but they would issue him a trespass notice uh, but then later on they called back the guy whose car was stolen and said they had in fact arrested him and had him in custody so something else must have happened uh, maybe maybe some more information came to light maybe he said something incriminating while they were talking to him and so they did end up arresting him so overall good response and 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 look the police officers involved i thought they did a really good job but you know like a lot of parts of the world um yeah we've got a little bit of an issue with not enough policing resources at the moment so there's all sorts of things that aren't being taken care of in a timely manner and this was just one of them so yeah so that was the experience and like i said it was a bit traumatic now it wasn't i wouldn't say it was overly traumatic for me um it's hard hard to <laughs> hard to necessarily tell from these vlogs but i'm quite large quite heavy uh, quite solid i've done a lot of kung fu um and so yeah i mean if, if anyone's in a reasonably good position to, to deal with someone being violent and aggressive yeah i'm in a pretty good position to handle that but violence is unpredictable um and even even when handled well you know which ultimately leading to a successful outcome there can be injuries and all sorts of problems in the way and then all sorts of headaches in terms of police reports and you know all that sort of thing so it's like it's not a pleasant experience and and this guy was also threatening saying that he was going to come back and essentially threatening us with violence that he would come back to the property later and yeah so, so that's that's a bit stressful now again was it overly traumatic for me no but definitely a little bit stressful so definitely you know my body will respond to the and my body my energy the two are connected if you followed this vlog for a while you'll know that that's pretty essential to how i see our, <coughs> excuse me our energy <coughs> and qigong practice in general is that there's not it's not like there's a big separation between our body and our energy the two are intimately connected and so yes that's gonna my energy is going to become activated by that and my, my body there's going to be responses my body is going to release hormones it's going to release some adrenaline it's going to release some cortisol to prepare itself for what may happen you know it's going to activate nerves and muscles and so on and so when i came back from that um yeah what, what would i say i was overly traumatized no but yeah I was, I was a little bit i guess on edge a little bit stirred up um and i wanted to be able to get on with the rest of my day i've got things to do today um and so what i do i went and i did my qigong practice three hours later than it was <laughs> originally planned to be by the time i got through all of that um yeah and now i didn't specifically do those four simple practices that i talked about earlier in the video again because i didn't feel 
overly traumatized so i didn't feel sort of an emer emergency need to like oh i've really got to shake this off but i did feel the need that i really need to clear this energy through so that i can settle down so i can release it properly so that i can carry on with my day and even my week and so on so it doesn't like hang around and continue to bother me or and and throw my energy off in any way so what did I do for my Qigong practice? So I started, I did some bow in humility, which is the first movement in the waking the qi um, practice. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, if you have, have a look on the Long White Cloud Qigong uh, YouTube channel, you'll find there's several videos of it there and you can get an idea. It's a really nice um, series of practices for activating your energy. I just did the first one, uh, which is particularly, it's really good for opening up the lower back it's very very simple but it helps open up the lower back so of course in terms of my kidneys being activated and all that adrenaline good to help to release that tension through my lower back so the energy can start to flow more freely so I started with that and then I did some elemental alchemy sound qigong practices and these are really interesting you use different sounds for vibrating the organs in your body and, and it's a quite a tangible thing. You can feel the way they each vibrate with different sounds. And this gives each of those organs a little massage. And it helps them to release tensions so that they, um, they become relaxed and they get back into balance. They release any sort of overactivation or any blockage in their energy flow. Um, and then after that, I did a whole series of movements for opening up my thrusting vessel. So this is the one that runs right through the center of our bodies and it's our primary connection to the energy of heaven and earth. Essentially, it allows fresh energy to flow into and through our system. So it's great for releasing blocked energy and, and allowing fresh energy in, you know, if you've expended energy. And then after that, I stood in, well, so actually as part of that opening up my thrusting vessel, I did do some shaking as part of that. That was part of the practice. I did a specific type of shaking. And then I did some standing in a Wuji Zhangzhuan posture. So Zhangzhuan is the still practices where you stand. So standing post or standing like a tree. And so I did a Wuji Zhangzhuan practice where I stood for an hour. <laughs> so it was quite a long one. Um, and yeah, so that was the practice I did. And here's the thing. That was the practice I was already intending to do. That was, I was already planning to do that practice anyway. And so I didn't really need to change my practice to help to bring things back into balance from the traumatic experience. I, I was going to do that anyway. And it's like, well, that'll, that'll, that'll do the job for me. So I'll just carry on with my practice just, just like I planned it. Um, and this is, this is I, I guess, as a, as a broader point for people, again, people who are already, if you're already practicing Qigong, you'll find that lots of different Qigong practices can actually fill these roles and work really well to help to settle and rebalance your energy after um, after a traumatic experience. So the simple ones that I showed you, these are really useful, you know, as a starting point to release your energy. But carrying on with some other practices that balance your energy and help to harmonize it is going to be really useful as well. Lots of practices are good for that. Um, I, I know a lot of the people who watch this channel, uh, well I guess there's lots of different people who watch the channel, but a lot of them are people who have done long white cloud qigong practices and courses in the past. So, you know, if, if you've done the small universe qigong program, um, there's a whole series of practices in there where we work with the, the, well we do waking the qi which I just talked about, we work with the organ meridians to bring them into balance, balancing all of the organs and the flow of the meridians. We work with the extraordinary meridians and connecting to heaven and earth, allowing the energy to flow through us and strengthen our energy. And we work with the free flow of energy to help it flow, you know, release any little stuck energy and help it to flow freely. You know, we do all of that within those practices. All of those are, are really going to be useful. Um, and then a, a, another one of the programs we have, it's the Inner Fire Qigong program. And this one, it's much more active uh, practices, much more dynamic. We do inner fire breath work, which really activates our energy strongly from within. Uh, we do wild animal play, which circulates the energy in a really dynamic way. And it really develops a lot of physical qualities of strength and speed and flexibility and balance and all of these things. Um, and, and then we also do iron shirt qigong, 
which consolidates the energy, makes you really strong and resilient. And so, you know, all of these sorts of practices can be really useful for releasing trauma as well, helping to clear it out. And what's more, they also put you in a really good position to not become out of balance as easily when you do experience something. So as I mentioned, I wasn't overly traumatized and you know, part of that is my size and background and so on. But part of it also is an experience of doing Qigong. It's a bit easier to stay calm even under stressful situations. And so the different Qigong practices really help with that if you're doing that on an ongoing basis. To, to help you to, you know, again, it's not that experiences don't have an effect on you, but they're not as likely to push you way out of balance. They might push you a little bit, and then it's easier to come back into balance, particularly if you continue with your practice, and you can sort of get back into harmony more quickly, more easily. Um, if you're wondering about standing in Wuji Zhangzhuan for an hour, um, you don't always have to do that, of course. Um, uh, sometimes if you're working on something particularly deep within your body, within your energy system, sometimes you need to go a bit deeper into the practices to accomplish that. And there's some, some things I'm working on at the moment. It's like, yeah, an hour standing in the Zhangzhuan posture was really good. Really good today. So, there you go. Um, oh, that's right. I was going to say what I did after the Qigong as well, because I think there's some relevance to this as well. So after that, by the time all of that was done, again, this whole thing, I'd been out for a run, and then the whole thing took about three hours by the time I got back. Um, and uh, so I, I went and I had a shower. So, you know, I did some showering, washing my energy, you know, at the end of my practice. And then I went and had a real shower. That's a good thing too. It's a, it's a physical thing where we, we also help to clear some energy. Um, and, and, and soothe and this you know it was a warm shower so it's nice and relaxing so that was a good thing then by the time all of that so you know the inc the run the incident in the morning my qigong practice which was an hour and a half two hours then a shower and so on it was about two o'clock in the afternoon and I hadn't eaten yet um, so I went and ate and um, and that's something important too because again um, talking about those different responses that we get into, whether it be freeze or fight and flight or that unsteadiness. So that unsteadiness, th there's lots of things that contribute to it, but uh, a lot of it actually relates directly to our blood sugar levels and if those are steady or not. Um, and because when we're really activated, our body goes into a kind of emergency mode and it releases hormones to keep us going and, you know, make us alert and make us ready for things and, uh, you know, w whatever that may be. Um, but it's really important that we come back out of that and do things to release that activation. And then we get back into taking care of our really basic needs like eating. Um, and, and that is if you, you know, one of, if we talk about these states of um, response, I already talked about fight or flight or freeze. The flip side of that people often refer to as rest and digest. So we, we need to release the, the excess activation so that we can rest. And then often actually eating something is really helpful because it starts going, okay, and now, now we're getting back to normal. We're really getting back to normal. We can eat some food, blood sugar can get nice and level, and, and then we can carry on like normal. All right, a little bit of a different vlog today, a few different parts to it. Um, at the very least, uh, hopefully lots of people will find the first part with those four simple uh, Qigong practices useful easy to remember, easy to do if you experience something traumatic to help release that energy. And maybe there's some interesting things in the story time and talking about other aspects of Qigong practice as well. Um, if you're interested in the courses we run, we've got some short courses, um, uh, including some free ones about, um, you know, getting a start on Qigong practice, introduction to Qigong theory and practice and things like that. Um, but then the main thing we have available right now are quite comprehensive in-depth practices. They're actually 200 hour instructor certification practices. But they're really good for anyone who really wants to get deep into their Qigong practice. So um, yeah, I'll put some links to those in the description below as well. And yeah, maybe if you're interested you can check those out. If you've liked this vlog, please like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.